Filming this video about winter in Canada, I must admit I had this wave of nostalgia. I was born and raised in Winnipeg, the city that people often call Winterpeg. Winter, Winnipeg, get it? It's known as one cold city. But I hadn't been back to Winnipeg in the winter for 20 years. So could I survive the cold again? Hello world. This is how we survive winter in Canada. If it worries, it's good. If it doesn't, it's bad. Yeah, didn't worry. All right, so first off, you won't find most Canadians snowshoeing across the snow. How Canadians actually survive our cold winters is quite simple. We stay indoors. We have a thing called central heating, where a furnace pushes hot air all around the house through vents. We run that 24-7, so it's always nice and toasty in our homes. And if we're traveling to another indoor location, we'll usually do that in heated metal boxes on wheels, called automobiles. The key thing is always staying near a heater. But I think you came to this video to see ice, snow, and freezing temperatures. <laughs> Skating on ice, walking on ice, driving on ice, I'll give you that. Snow storms, snow plows, snow piles, and snow shelters. I got that too. The bitter cold, oh yeah, I got you covered. I think a great way to experience winter across Canada is to drive across it. As it happens, my brother needed his newly bought used car to be transported halfway across the country, so I joined him for the trip. We'd be going from Vancouver, where it barely goes below freezing, to Winnipeg, where they like to brag about how it goes to minus 40. The great thing about that number is that I could be talking about Celsius or Fahrenheit. Minus 40 degrees Celsius is exactly the same as minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. How convenient. The drive is only 2,300 kilometers, so, you know, quite the normal 24-hour drive we like to do in this massive country. You can see these big strips of white on the mountains, which kind of look like ski runs. But in fact, are avalanche areas where snow regularly comes down and clears all in its path, including trees. This is why some sections have snow sheds in place to protect vehicles in the areas most prone to avalanches. Despite the sheds, the roads will still get closed for avalanche control, which happened to us just before the start of the Rocky Mountains. Avalanche control is where they stop traffic, set off explosives to trigger avalanches, and then clear the roads if necessary. Fortunately for us, this lasted hours instead of days. Because of the snowfall and potential road closures that were coming up, we were essentially trying to outrun a storm, which is why we pushed on driving past midnight. At this point, we had been driving since 5 a.m. in the morning. The problem with the wind blowing across is that they make these patterns in the snow that are kind of hypnotizing. And where are the lines? This is a two-way highway with no barrier in the middle, so at any moment there could be oncoming traffic. The most terrifying moments were when big semis would blast by and create a mini blizzard in its wake, causing me to lose sight of the road for several seconds. Are you going left? Right? Straight? Who knows? The only thing you can do is go slow and try to hold the steering wheel as steady as you can. The next day, the roads were still officially open, but we felt that they really shouldn't have. In case you couldn't tell from the flat nothingness, we were driving across Saskatchewan. The Trans-Canada, Canada's main highway that goes from the Atlantic to Pacific Ocean, was covered in black ice, which made it like a cross-country skating rink. But instead of on skates, we were on wheels, and it was dangerous driving for all vehicles. And maybe you're thinking, those semi-drivers are really good. Are they have special tires, are chains, are nope? We saw multiple trucks jackknifed in the ditch. How do they even get in the ditch? Uh, black ice, it's like pure, it's like ice, ice, ice. I wonder if this is one of the ones that, we pa that passed us. After making it to Swift Current, we were going to call it quits, as the Trans-Canada was clearly straight ice. However, looking at the maps, it appeared that the rural roads of Saskatchewan may not be so bad. And what do you know? They were fantastic! Hands down, my favorite driving experience in the province. I mean, who knew Saskatchewan had hills? What happened on the highway was that the temperature was close enough to the melting point 
that the big fast trucks barreling through melted the snow, so that when the temperature got colder, it created deathly sheets of ice. But for these backcountry roads, because there were few vehicles using them, they were in relatively great shape for driving. As great as the rural roads of Saskatchewan were, the main highways to Winnipeg were in various states of closure. So we decided to bunker down in Regina. Leaving in the morning, we experienced a beautiful sky and a highway that still had large patches of ice. Snow clearing equipment was out, but where they had serviced and where they had yet to was hit and miss. Now, despite what these roads looked like, I recall them being quite good to drive on as they had been sanded and thus the car could get decent traction. Finally, we made it to Winnipeg. By this time, the roads were all cleared and sanded or salted. People often think of Winnipeg as cold and snowy, but only one of those things is true. It is cold in the winter, but it's not especially snowy. It's just that it's so cold that the snow doesn't normally get a chance to melt and thus can accumulate snowfall after snowfall. In recent times, Winnipeg has averaged 118 centimeters of snow per year, while Quebec City has 316, so nearly three times as much. Winnipeg doesn't even make it into the top 10 snowiest cities in Canada, but we are the number one coldest major city in the country. Winnipeg, one great city. Oh wait, our slogan is now Winnipeg, made from what's real. The great thing about being so cold is that the snow was light and fluffy. That's actually pretty easy. Yeah, it's not too bad. Fluffy snow. Yeah, I guess it's nice and cold like this. It was bad, um, actually just a couple of weeks ago, because it was right around zero and it was so warm that the snow was heavy and froze onto the car. And then the doors would freeze shut. So you're telling me you like it colder? Well, for this. Not for life, but for this. <laughs> yeah, you can see the sun's quite powerful now. It's starting to melt here. So that ice is just impossible to get off. Yeah, so the bad thing about being so cold is that if the snow gets a chance to turn into ice, you literally need an ice pick to see the pavement again. So that's why you'll see roads that have been plowed but are still covered in ice and compressed snow. And that's why my brother's driveway isn't down to pavement. Well, it's good. You, you go deeper, is that good for you? No, that's perfect. I mean, at this point in the season, you kind of just give up on perfection. It's just okay. soften the flow. That's called a Winnipeg hello, because the guy does not want to get out of his truck. So we're just waiting for it to defog so we can actually see when we're driving. This is fun in Winnipeg. Yeah, if I knew we were moving, I would have uh, started the car while we were actually shoveling. You're just breathing smoke, it's awesome. <laughs> I would like to address the topic of cold. It does get cold, like minus 30 degrees Celsius and even minus 40 degrees Celsius like once in a decade. This is before wind chill, which can easily make it feel 10 degrees colder. Because Winnipeg is in the middle of the prairies and there's not much to stop the wind from blowing, wind chill is a massive coldness factor. However, and this is a huge however, there's very little humidity. So even if it's minus 30 degrees factoring in wind chill, it's tolerable as long as you have the proper clothing. I know this may sound like some old timey story, but I used to walk home 40 minutes in the middle of winter every day from school, and I usually only had a pair of jeans or corduroys with no long johns. But with the sun out, it was kind of nice. When I first traveled to Toronto, I was very cocky and thought, hey, it's only minus 10. But I froze my butt off. With that humidity, it felt colder to me than a sunny minus 30 day in Winnipeg. That humidity causes the cold to seep into your bones, no matter how you dress. This is called a warming hut, but it's just rope around <laughs> some wood. It's not warm in here. Yeah. And that's how they get to school. 
this gives me confidence that we're on stable ice. Is this normal? So, at what temperature do you get to not play outside at? Uh, minus 28, I think. And then you're not allowed to play outside at recess? Yeah. So today, did you get, did you get to play at recess? Uh, no, I had to patrol though, so we went outside still. So in Winnipeg, when it hits minus 28 degrees Celsius with wind chill, students aren't allowed outdoors for recess. Although kids will still walk, take the bus, or get dropped off at school because there's still school. Yeah. Oh, that's a good seat. Oh, is that just an air bubble? That's a bubble. Yeah, let's crack the air bubble. Yeah, go, 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 go. That sounds like a smart idea on the river. <laughs> let's do it, let's do it. These metal benches seem so warm. What kind of warming hut is this? It's warming here. It's a cooling hut. How is this a warming hut? It's not warm. <laughs> yeah, it's not warm. People in Winnipeg have a very weird idea of what is warm. This looks like water. Water! Let's go this way. I want to see the water. I want to see the water. <laughs> so we were trying to go to the ice fishing hut? Yeah, over there. Over, like, let's see. Someone was like stabbing holes in the ice or something. And I stepped into a whole entire thing full of like slushy water. Yeah, and then, and then you stepped into the, a big pile of like like. I thought you were joking. No, I was not joking. But there really was water in <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah. Now I think it can still move. Oh my gosh, there's water in your foot. <laughs> Let's get you back. I can survive. It's good, it's good, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Yeah. Is your foot wet? Uh, yeah. Okay, well we should get back because it does get bad. Yeah, yeah we'll go in the forks, get a hot chocolate or something. After searching around, I'm convinced that the slushy part of the river was caused by warm discharges flowing from the storm sewer system. A bit scary. My niece found that her skates were frozen on, so we had to take her to the car and run the heater to get them off. Then we went for hot chocolate. Good. Cheers. For some reason I can't quite remember, I wanted to film snow plows. So I was quite excited to catch them clearing the roads in St. Boniface. Some sidewalks were cleared really well, like in front of this community center. However, the 21-22 winter season had record levels of snowfall. So an unfortunate casualty was that snowbanks started overflowing onto some sidewalks. Another tricky thing with the amount of snow is that while there are markers like this for fire hydrants, there were 932 property and vehicle damage claims for the season. Snowplows gone wild. While I think most people appreciate the work done to keep the roads safe and clear, I can tell you from experience, it does suck when you get the bad luck of an especially large pile of snow blocking your way. Those chunks are heavy to clear. I am a sucker for pure white snow. It really pretties up the city. Sadly, keeping the roads safe requires sanding, which means you'll see a lot of brown and gray. And now that I think of it, yellow as well. The city of Winnipeg has a large Festival de Voyageur celebration with outdoor snow sculptures every year. I didn't get to film it, but these ones in Coronation Park were very nice. In downtown Winnipeg, there's a large network of indoor walkways that let you go between many of the buildings without ever needing to step foot outside. Some are underground, and you enter them through stairways going down, kind of like going to catch a subway. While others are above ground, and you can cross between buildings using sky bridges. Actually, I don't think that's the name for them, but it sounds cool, doesn't it? Wait, I just looked it up. They're called skyways, so close enough. Pretty much you guys survive winter by not going outside. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, they're full of shops, and if you want to walk around without freezing, it comes in handy. Although today was only minus 24 with no wind, so it was quite lovely in the sun. It was so nice that I wasn't even wearing my winter jacket for my brief 10 minute stints filming outdoors. By the way, I love how the mailboxes and pedestrian crossing button are drowning in snow. Originally, this video was supposed to be about real Canadian winter survival. 
like you're in the wilderness with few supplies. And the fantastic thing was that my friend Sherman has a company called Maple Leaf Survival that does training. The big problem though, is that there's no good way to properly explain it all within a few minutes. So what I'll do is put up his full explanations on my X channel, my extra channel. However, I will show you a bit of what we got up to. So there's a variety of reasons why, even if you're driving a vehicle, you might end up in a survival situation. So it's helpful to have a few items in your vehicle. So Sherman spent a good 15 minutes explaining essential survival items. And needless to say, he was well geared up. And when I thought he was done. If you really wanted to get crazy, you could outfit your, your vehicle with a little bit more gear. I didn't think regular Canadians would stock their car like he did, so. So I've asked uh, Sherman to check out my brother's car to see how he's doing for winter survival. Let's open her up. Okay, let's see what we have here. Well, we have a pair of running shoes. I don't know how useful they will be in a winter survival situation, but I guess you never know. We have some <clears throat> receipts. I suppose you could use these for, uh, you know, to help start a fire. I left this part in because I think it's fairly typical for most city dwellers to not have much packed in their car. Something more common would be winter tires. In parts of BC and for residents of Quebec, it's mandatory. Although in Manitoba, where we're filming, it's optional. In below freezing weather, winter tires do a much better job at traction and stopping, but there are plenty of people that get by with all season or all weather tires. On another day, Sherman took me out to the woods to walk in circles. So Sherman, what are we building here? We're gonna try our hand at building a Quincy winter snow shelter. In the morning, if you factor in the wind chill, it was nearly that magic number, minus 40, where Celsius and Fahrenheit can agree on things. It was cold, but actually, shoveling did keep us warm. Well, I was, uh, I wasn't taking a nap behind the Quincy, trying to get an idea of whether or not it's going to be big enough for us. Because if what you're doing is building one of these for a survival situation, you don't want to make it any bigger than you need to, because uh, chances are you're probably going to be heating the inside of the Quincy with your own body heat. Uh, so that over there is uh, about 25 minutes of work, and apparently we just got to let it sit. The idea behind that is right now it might be a little bit too fluffy to dig into. While waiting for the Quincy to set up before we dug into it, we practiced how signaling with mirrors worked at a distance. As you can tell, it was very easy to see from afar. Yeah, saw it. Now you want to carve the snow out, and not hack it out. It just reduces the chances of it collapsing because of an over-aggressive shoveling. This is a tremendous amount of weight, and if it were to collapse on you while you're inside it, carving it out, um, it, it, it could be fatal. This Quincy looks an awful lot like Mount Fuji. Yeah. It's much warmer in here than outside, so I'm just gonna stay in here. I already feel like it's gonna be a, it's a lot warmer in the Quincy than it is sitting around this fire. <laughs> I've never seen that made like that before. Sherman built an amazing fire, stacking the wood in a neat way, all to melt snow into water. It took four minutes to melt half a cup, but all I could think of was how cold it was by the fire and wishing I was back in the snow shelter. Ah, uh, winter fresh. Before we did that though, we did warm up by running around in the field. Normally people think of fire as a good way to get the attention of search and rescue operations. But in the daytime, flames can be hard to see. You could do a signal fire that uses pine boughs to create a lot of smoke. But a non-fire way to signal when you have an open field is to write your message in the snow. Okay, come back. All right, so we made the SOS. I think that it looks like SDS. Yeah, it kind of does. But I think rescuers would get the point. I would hope so. <laughs> Watch yourself. There's only one rule while we're in here. Can I seal this up? 
There's no farting. That's what I thought. So the phone is saying minus 21 outside. I think when I had the thermometer in the shade, it was minus 24. And what does it say right now? That's about minus five, minus four degrees. So it's definitely a lot nicer. Not freezing my toes off, not freezing my fingers off. <laughs> it's nice. It's comfortable, it's very comfortable. What do you want to prioritize in a survival situation? Generally speaking, assuming you don't need first aid, it would be shelter, water, fire, food, generally in that order. And the reason for that is because there's this thing called the rule of threes, which kind of helps you figure out what you should tackle first. So you can survive for about three hours in extreme heat or cold before exposure gets you. You can survive for roughly three days without water before de dehydration starts to get um, become a problem. Um, and you can survive for roughly three weeks without food. Is it recording? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going home. Again, I'll put a link in the description to a much longer video of Sherman's teachings on my X channel. But what I want to show now is something that does happen to many, many Winnipeggers in the winter. We are going to see if this car starts. So what we got here is my youngest brother's car, which is blocking the exit of my oldest brother's. If it whirs, it's good. If it doesn't, it's bad. Yeah, it didn't work. Yep. Give her so close. Did you give it like a little pump of gas? I can give it another shot. Let's see. Pump, pump. I'm gas. pumping, I'm pumping. Yeah, nothing. Not a thing. I think you need your big brother to go in and try. Nothing, eh? I don't know, dude. What's the option here? I'll let you out. And then we push the car back onto the driveway and plug you in. How much pushing do you guys want to do? None. Never mind. Three, two, one. Something that most vehicles in Winnipeg have is a block heater, which keeps your car engine warm when you're not driving it. Whether or not you need to use it depends on your vehicle and the temperature, but for my brother's car, he definitely needed it. Are you filming this? Yeah, I'm a YouTube star. <laughs> With a little bit of old-fashioned car pushing, something Winnipegs are pros at, we were able to let my oldest brother out, and my youngest brother was able to plug in his car. There we go. And 30 minutes later... Oh yeah, it's gonna start. Ooh! Got him, boys. The expired gift card method. Now it's nice and uh, snowy inside. All right, good night. See you guys. On my last day in the peg, my nieces took me out on a tour of the neighborhood. Is it, what temperature is it right now? Minus 29, but with the wind trail, minus 34. Does it feel cold? No. I think if we didn't have a face covering or anything, it would be pretty cold. So yeah. Can you even lift it? Do you ever play a snowball fight with those? No. So high. <laughs> no, don't. You dropped it on me! Yeah, I know! Skating rink. <laughs> Poor kids. Along the side of the road is the biggest slope in the city. I'm kind of joking, but the local ski hill is called Spring Hill and has a vertical of 40 meters or 130 feet. Woo! Nice! Our path has been blocked by the snow clouds. Okay, got it? Okay, Estelle, let's film your face. We found the dare pathway. I used to love playing this.
to get it on your sled. You don't really have to be so worried about having snow pants because of the cold, right? No, it's not too bad. Yeah. As long as you make sure to brush it off before you go inside. Yeah, I guess so. Alright. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Peace. What's surviving winter like where you're from? <laughs>